Hi everyone, and welcome back to Tokyo on Fire. Today is January 30th, 2018. We predicted earlier in the fall that after the election, the prime minister would go somewhat of a, a vacation. He would visit other foreign countries. He would be a little bit aloof to what's going on in Tokyo. The diet started four days ago. Michael, there's a lot of things going on in this circus. No, it's a, it is a circus, and Mr. Abe is not the circus master. He's just one of the acts. When you open up the diet, Mr. Abe has a prominent role. He gives his policy speech, which is supposed to set the tone and the, the agenda for the, the uh, entire session. But then the opposition gets to have its speeches and start asking questions. And then when that ball is rolling and, and moving forward, it's very hard to control it and keep it online. It's televised every day and there are fireworks almost every day reported in the news. The opposition is asking tough questions. The prime minister sometimes stands up and answers them or he, he shakes his, uh, his foreign minister and says, you answer the question. There's a lot going on. Yeah, and then the thing is, is that the media really loves this. Uh, they have something to work with, which in the period after the elections were done, it, it was a quiet time. Yeah. There was no uh, necessarily exciting issues to handle, and everyone was just trying to deal with the aftershocks and aftermath of the election, which was almost basically predictable in its outcome from the time that it was called. So now we have a, a regular diet session. It has to go for 150 days. There's no way for Abe and company to shut debate down. Right. They have to just take it, whatever is coming at them. And a lot of things are coming at them. And really, this is, I don't know what Mr. Abe thinks the theme of this particular session is, but mine is, I'm not in control of this. Well, I think what he wants to do is he wants to keep things calm. He doesn't want to bring things to a boil. You can see a lot of fisticuffs going on inside the diet. In fact, there was a little bit of heckling going on, which resulted in a little bit of a punch. Well, that's that was a really amazing uh, situation that got resolved, so to speak, but in a way that was mostly just to get it done quickly. In, right. in the case of the, the deputy uh, cabinet office minister, uh, Matsumoto, he heckled a speech in, in which someone was speaking about the helicopter accidents that have been happening, uh, none of them fatal, none of them with any injuries of any major sort, but nevertheless, there have been a series of helicopter mishaps involving U.S. helicopters in the Okinawa prefecture. And when someone was going on and on and on about these accidents, he, for some reason, thought it was appropriate to yell out, right, you know, well, how many died? Mm -hmm. Come on. Well, there's a lot of heckling going on. I mean, it, it is a chamber. It is a, it is a, a mosh pit, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, 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 and heckling is a part of right. the entire uh, project. Though those who have you know, positions that are appointed positions in the government... Decorum are, kind of dictates. You would, you would think that it does. And, and normally they are controlled, but right. even Mr. Abe can't control his lips sometimes when he's si spo seated and supposed to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Uh, he sometimes blurts out things. So he, he sets a bad example himself. Right. But Matsumoto is, is an incredibly inappropriate statement involving Okinawa because this is the year of Okinawa elections. Yes, it is. We've got an election that's going on now in Nago City, and it tees up another election, which tees up the third election, which will be the big granddaddy in November. That's right. We, we, we had already a shock to the system in the Nanjo election on the January 21st, where the candidates supported by the LDP and the Komeito barely lost to a, an anti-based uh, new, newcomer, mm -hmm. supported by governor, by the governor uh, who is himself anti-base. Now, the Nago election is for another anti-base uh, incumbent, Inamine, who is looking for his third term. His opponent, again, is a Komeito and LDP, but also Ishin no Kai uh, supported candidate who does the usual in terms of Okinawa. If, if, if you elect me, the government will send it more money our That's way. Right. So, and the government it, says that as well. And the government says that as well. And the government always says that to Nago City because it's supposed to be the city that accepts the Futenma replacement facility. Mm -hmm. And they've been marking out the, the zones in the water 
uh, pushing away protesters. The gates of that the facility, Camp Schwab, are const is constantly mobbed with protesters, and there these old ladies and old men are being pulled out of the way so that trucks can go in and out. It's 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 a circus of its own right there, and that election is the 4th of, Fe of February. It's really close. So Matsumoto had to go. Mm -hmm. That There could not be in the government someone who said something... Detractors. Yeah, said, that's right, who said something nasty about uh, the Okinawans as being, you know, too emotional, overreacting, which is, you know... So how many died? Right. And that kind of... Uh, that, that kind of sarcasm w was forbidden. Mm -hmm. We have later in the year uh, the Nago City Council and you, you need both the mayor's office and the council together, they, they, if, and right now they are, there's a good chance that the anti-base majority that's there will be reelected. Right. But the big kahuna is in December when the governor goes up, when he goes up for a re-election. Uh, he is the anti-base governor. He's been suing the government left and right. Very popular governor. And very popular, uh, and used to be an LDP member. Now he's he's uh, he's got this peace coalition, which includes the communists, and he's strongly supported by the Communist Party, which is, is not, with the socialists quite strong mm -hmm. uh, in Okinawa. It's the only place where they really have a, a anything like a stronghold. So it looks like a shoe in for him. But the, sure. the but the when, it's, a, it's a building block, isn't it? We're yeah, building the, up to that. Yeah, but the uh, one never knows, and the uh, the Abe administration sure would like to at least have one win in Okinawa this year. So, Minister Matsumoto, goodbye. You're right. You're gone. Elsewhere, they're having trouble with uh, other different elections that are going on. There are different. Well, the, one of the things that is often really difficult for people to understand is. Japan is in constantly in election mm -hmm. because of, well, somebody dies, somebody resigns. There's a, a yeah, and, a and step instead change. of waiting for a, a single unified date for elections, which is which was what the United States established in its during the occupation, uh, the dates for elections are now spread out all over the calendar. Virtually every weekend has an, a mayor's election or some kind of local assembly election or something going on. Uh, every every weekend, mm -hmm. so the, the the for it's hard on the opposition because they don't have the resources that the ruling party has that to keep the electoral machine running mm -hmm. twenty four hours a day, three hundred sixty five days a year. Uh, it's it, it wears down the opposition, and so the, the uh, LDP has never felt any pressure at all at reforming the system and getting all the elections back on mm -hmm. one day. Right. So, yeah, we're going to be seeing a lot of contests. But the thing is, is that the, this uh, most recent one is involving Gifu Prefecture. Right. Or, or maybe you want to talk about well, Yeah, well, this current election that we're talking about is a 33-year-old uh, mayor mm -hmm. who resigned because he was charged for bribery that happened in 2013. Yeah. And he was, con and he was exonerated. Convicted. Well, he was convicted, he was charged, it's now up to the Supreme Court to review that, because he, he won in the lower court. He won, he won on the, in the but it, he, okay, so my understanding was that he was, was exonerated, he was found not guilty, but in Japan, even though in the Constitution it says there is no double jeopardy, mm -hmm. there is double jeopardy, and he was tried again in a higher court by the prosecutor's office and was found guilty, and now he's, gone to the Supreme Court, is, right. is, that's it. Well, as a consequence of that, he's reapplied for re-election. Yeah, well. And he, he'll probably win. He'll probably win because he was the people's choice originally. Uh, and there is, in Japan, the prosecutor's office and also some aspects of the criminal justice system seem to be tilted to, in favor of the LDP mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the ability to go after well, sometimes they're even within the LDP. Young folks who want to challenge the system. Right. There is a peculiar frequency that they get into some kind of trouble. We saw the, the way that Ozawa Ichiro and his people were taken down when he was about to become prime minister with the mm -hmm. DPJ election in 2008, 2009. Uh, and we will get you one way or the we other. We will get you one way or the mm -hmm. other. It's one of the messages that they send to 
youngins, young Turks who try to challenge the system. That's right. Watch and your it, manners. Watch your manners. Know who you are and how far you can go. Mm -hmm. Don't think you can go too far. Uh, that's, uh, and unfortunately, the, that's a, a reality that- We it, see that played out everywhere though, Michael. You know, even with uh, a minister who might speak out off the cuff in some, you know, Middle Eastern country, you know, they will get slapped down too. You know, you're not supposed to speak out of school. And if you do, there are repercussions. Well, in this case, it's not so much, the, the, that is, 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 is I can uh, understand. But how it is possible that the, the criminal justice system works in sync with the establishment mm -hmm. in this country is, you know, you wonder how do they do their coordination? How do they identify those people who like, like uh, Horie? when he was brought down uh, and uh, his, his company. Too big for your britches. You got too big for your britches. You tried to take on the Sanke group and take some of their radio assets or right. whatever. And then suddenly that his he lost complete control and was put in prison mm -hmm. on, on charges that if you applied it to the banking system, there would be <laughs> thousands of bankers who would be in jail That's for true. long periods of right. time based on, you know, you used funny accounting. I can tell you, Japanese banks have been using funny mm -hmm. accounting for quite some time. But, you know, the, the establishment wanted him mm -hmm. and the, 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 the uh, prosecutor's office got him. Yeah, I think what you're describing is, is it's a system here. We've got a system, it's well-oiled, it works pretty well. You just don't want to step out of line too far too far ahead of the the cavalry, so to speak, and if you do, there, you know, you you can get caught and uh, and be punished for that. Yeah, and, and and speaking of getting out in front of the cavalry, we should one last thing that we should talk about is uh, there is one member, okay, one member of the cabinet, Noda Seiko, has basically declared that she'll be running for Mr. Abe's office in September. Mm -hmm. That is to say, president of the LDP. That she, bold move. She's gonna do that. But there's another member of the cabinet who's going off on his own all over the place. Yes, he's our favorite cabinet minister, isn't he? he? Well, he's the, one we know, he's the one we know the best. Right. And yeah, Kono Taro. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, uh, he's been saying some interesting things. He, he's, uh, he's got a knack for that. Well, he does, but in this case, he, he basically trashed the government's plans regarding it, the distribution of power and the, and the way power is going to be generated. He didn't trash it, he just said it's lamentable. I thought it was a kind of innocuous statement. I thought it was fair and, and you know, well-delivered, but he did catch an awful lot of flack for that. Yeah, he did, but it, the, when he says lamentable, he means that the, the current government plan strongly underplays and pushes down uh, the potential for use of renewable energy in favor of maintaining a sense of crisis right. so that the reopening and the restarting of nuclear power plants seems like an imperative. Mm -hmm. uh, that. The, the government is stage managing the energy system of Japan rather than trying to have some kind of long-term strategy other than you know, pleasing the zaikai, right. the, big, the big business people who want the, the nuclear power plants restarted. Mm -hmm. uh, he, and he's, he spoke out and saying, well, yeah, the, what the government's doing, the, the plans for renewables, they're lamentable. Right. They, they are really not up to snuff. They don't, they don't fulfill Japan's international obligations in terms of carbon emissions. It, it doesn't show any kind of leadership in terms uh, of the inculcation and, 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 and how the uh, renewables will be included. Japan's missing the boat. Right. And that's not something a cabinet minister is supposed to be saying, especially to foreign audiences, sure. well, which is what he did. Yeah, well, he's an, a, a famous outspoken critic of nuclear energy for Japan. I mean, he's, he, it's been one of his chief topics to talk about you know, what's wrong with the Japanese uh, energy mix. That's, I, that's true. And, but he also just has a, an impish sense of humor. I mm -hmm. mean, today, the, if you looked at his Twitter feed, he has this big picture of himself, a selfie taken with the very famous woman who is the, uh, the chief spokesman for the, the Chinese foreign ministry. And they're both smiling is just friendly and happy as can be. Only he could get away right. with that, and only he would try that. You know, mm -hmm. Here I am, and it says in his English version, it says here with a very famous woman. Yes, and, and she's and, and 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 so the spokesman Wang is there, and he said, "Gosh, 
Sure, but one of the reasons why people like him so much is because he, he really, self-deprecation. He, he makes fun of himself or he puts himself down, and I think it just makes people like him that much more. Yeah, and then the thing is, he also is a political blue blood. He, he has much, even more of a claim than Abe to, you know, I come from a, a family, he, he sure a, a distinguished family. Mm -hmm. And uh, his, his father, Kono Yohei, was chief cabinet secretary and delivered in just before the, the changeover in government, the famous Ko, uh, Kono Statement. Uh, and he served as, as, as the head of the LDP, but never was prime minister. Mm -hmm. and, and how that works out in terms of father to son, in terms of you know um, rivalry, I'm not quite oh, sure. Oh, I don't think it's rivalry. I think it's just like in Japanese politics, probably elsewhere too, the reason why you have so many second and third generation politicians is because the goodwill that you generate as a politician, it never goes away, it never dissipates. It's, it, it can be handed down, it could be handed down to a, a married son-in-law, but more directly to your eldest son. Mm -hmm. And that happens quite frequently here. And it's pretty direct. I mean, you get the, almost the whole package when you, when you make that transition. And between this particular father and son, he grafted his Part of his uh, oh, yeah, they, yeah, there's, his a, there's an actual sharing, right? Yeah, because Konotaro gave up part of his liver, his liver to his dad, dad to his dad. To That's keep, right, to, because his dad suffered liver failure. One of the first authorized transplants in uh, Japanese medical history. Yeah, that's right, and uh, so there, there's a lot of love there, to put it mildly, right, between the two. And uh, Kono Yohei is, was always a maverick, but. His son has taken it to an entirely new level. Right, but his father was also in the news just recently criticizing the prime minister for wanting to revise Article 9 of the Constitution. Yeah, but the, the, Kono Yohei, of course, is now out of politics, and so he can say a lot of things. We just recently lost one of such one of these great elders in, in uh, Nonaka Hiromu. Just who last week. Yeah, right? who, 92 years old. He'd, he had lived a long and productive life. Uh, there are a lot of these older retired LDP members who are looking at Abe and say, "Don't do this." Right. Uh, but you know they they are passing from the scene, and, and Abe watches them and waves them goodbye. Mm -hmm. uh, how long Kono Yohei will be here to have that role is is always a question. So just just to wrap up, Michael, this this theme on on the circus uh, situation going on here in Nagata Cho, the claim of of maybe some uh, ability to run for prime minister in the near future is not going to reach any sort of fruition for the next, maybe, certainly uh, not within this year. The LDP election will be in September. It's very likely, if things kind of muddle along like they are now, that Mr. Abbe will be reelected and he'll be prime there's, minister there's until- almost no, There's almost no way that anything could happen. I mean, right. that we, you know, we don't have any kind of scandal, though we have new scandals on the, on the, on the horizon, but, but nothing of the sort that could actually topple Mr. Abe. But we'll have we'll have a contest. So it's just it, it, this in this phase of time that we're we're talking about. It's just positioning, right? I mean, th there are political parties that are coming into f to to four. And some of them that are disintegrating, just as even as we're talking. Yeah, but in terms of the uh, party election for the LDP, which basically is the the election of this year, yeah, it, there, Mr. Abe has a basic desire to keep everything quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, others in his party will be putting up their flags, saying, you know, I'm running. Uh, is any follow me if anybody is wants to uh, challenge the mm -hmm. Abe. Uh, long-term rule, uh, and maybe a few will, will succeed. But in terms of, yeah, Mr. Abe is basically safe for as far as we can see. Right. A lot going on in Japanese politics. It's important to keep your eye on it. We'll be watching it for you and reporting. Please stay tuned.